Hello, my lovelies. Here we are doing another video for you guys. Today is 2 22 22. Um, as you guys know, it is a very powerful, uh, magical number. It is a mirroring energy. So I figured what best way to look into what your person feels about you. We're going to look into it for each one of the zodiac signs. I will be uploading this probably on the 23rd. Um, I wanted to use these energies before we commence the spell work for tonight, which we have tons of work to do, but I did want to look into it. I was being called and pulled towards it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to look into what your person or a person of interest feels about you, where this is headed, if it's heading anywhere. I'm going to be to the point. I'm going to be concise. So let's get into the reading for all of you guys. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward, guide me in this reading. Allow me to see clearly and concisely what is unfolding for each one of the zodiac signs. We're going to start off with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is that the person feels for them? Where is this connection headed? Let's see. What is unfolding for you, my lovelies? I hope you guys have put out your manifestations for today. I hope you guys are making the most of it. It is a magical portal opening to all your manifestations, to your desires. So put the intention out, my lovelies. All right, let's get into it. We're starting off with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what your person feels about you. Let's dive deep. Let's be nosy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right. So we're starting off with the Page of Swords, the Ten of Wands, the Magician, the Queen of Pentacles, and the Queen of Wands. Aries, the person that you're interested in may be dealing with two people. They may be dealing with you, or they may be not fully moved on from someone from the past. I do see communication. Whenever you feel like there is hot and cold type of communication where they communicate one day, ghost you the next day, and then all of a sudden they pop up again. Um, truth of the matter is they don't know where they stand at the moment. I feel like they're holding on to something from the past. They may not be completely honest or transparent with you in regards to that. And that could be the reason why they're kind of stringing you along or not being completely honest. Now, I am hearing that they are feeling you. They are... Um, feeling something towards you, but it's not as powerful or as strong as the pull that they have with the person from the past, okay? So my lovelies, I always tell you guys, and I keep it 100%, if a person is not fully putting the effort and energy you are, they're not worth your energy. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go now to Taurus. Let's see what spirit has for you guys. Taurus, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Spirit guides, give us guidance for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Allow us to see what their person is feeling about them, where this connection is going, if it's going anywhere. Give us clarity and insight. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. There we go. I'm going to be doing another reading uh, in the next few days for singles, okay? This is for people that are already dealing with someone or interested in someone. All right, my lovelies, we have the Six of Wands, Eight of Swords, the World Card, the Two of Swords, and the Nine of Swords, and the Three of Wands. Um, they are definitely in their head about this connection. Uh, they definitely see you as someone that they admire. Uh, this is a, more of a superficial type of connection for some of you guys. Um, when I say superficial, I mean they feel greatly attracted to you, very pulled towards you in a sexual way. Eight of Swords does indicate being stuck. Um, they're refusing some type of ending. So if this is you that you've been dealing with someone, Taurus, and it's come to an end, or there's been some type of distancing involved, I feel that there's not going to be any type of communication, um, not in the very soon, I would say. Um, you're probably looking at hearing from them in the next coming two to three weeks. I don't see it, uh, very soon. Uh, the reason for this is I feel that in this connection, there's a lot of pride involved. Uh, there is a lot of stubbornness. 
There is a refusal of wanting to see or meeting of the minds. It's like they're refusing to see your point of view or you're refusing to see their point of view. And this is not really going anywhere. Yes, they do miss you. But is it enough to reach out? Is it enough to want to fight for you? Not at the very moment. I feel that they're guarded. And the reason why they're guarded is pride and ego. So again, if there was some type of argument, um, some type of uh, misunderstanding, if you are expecting or wanting to hear from them, I don't see it happening. I feel that in order to get it moving, you would be the one to have to reach out. My advice is, again, um, if you feel like you've been putting too much effort and they're not, then I would definitely advise you to stay at bay and allow them, give them enough time to think of you or give them enough time to miss you so that they can reach out. Why? Because I see that there is a feeling of like wanting to go towards them. Um, but I feel like if you do, it's not, it's going to continuously keep happening and you don't want that. You don't want to let them think that it's okay for them to pull back whenever there's a misunderstanding or something and that you're going to be kissing their ass. Uh, because then you will get them used to that. And then later on, you can't really complain about it because it becomes a habit. Okay. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Spirits, please give us guidance in regards to the connection of Gemini with their partner. What is it that they're feeling for them? Where is this connection going? If it's going anywhere, give us clarity and insight. Allow us to see. Gemini, here we go. We have the world, the two of swords, the nine of swords. Wow. It's, um, you have a few similar cards that Taurus did. So you, uh, Gemini's may be dealing with the Taurus. If you do have a Taurus uh, that you're interested in, you may want to see that, uh, that reading for them. So I see that there was some type of ending, some type of fallback. I feel like someone went back on their word um, or they were trying to prove something initially and they kind of gave up. Um, I feel like both of you guys are extremely stubborn, but um, surprisingly enough, you will be hearing from them in the month of March. I feel like they're going to be realizing um, that this connection or that this relationship is worth fighting for. I do see them coming back around, trying to contact you, trying to work it out or wanting to get on the same page. Now, if this was you, the one that pulled back Gemini or that decided you don't really want to continue uh, putting effort in this connection, I do. And again, if you feel, if you felt like you had to pull away because they weren't reciprocating the energy, I feel that they are going to be in their feelings a little bit, but they will be reaching out. Um, this was kind of like a teaching lesson for them. Um, the understanding of realizing of your worth and the fact that if you did in fact recently walked away because you said, I'm not going to be dealing with this type of nonsense. I want consistency. They're definitely going to see you in a very different light. And I feel like that's what's drawing them back to you. It's almost like the realization of your worth. Um, which is unfortunate because if you've been dealing with someone for quite a while, at this point, they should have known your worthiness. Um, so it's pretty much what they're saying here is the ball will be in your court. Um, you will have the upper hand and it will be up to you to decide whether you want to continue investing in this connection or not, Gemini. All right. Now we're going with Cancer. Let's see, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What is it that their partner is currently feeling? Where's this connection going? If it's going anywhere at all, give us clarity, give us insight. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these readings, definitely like. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can help the algorithm. So you can help grow this channel. Alrighty, here we go. One more cancer. Okay. We have the Knight of Wands, the Ten of Cups, the Seven of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, Temperance. Beautiful cards, beautiful cards. All right, cancer. Your person is seeing you in a very different light. Um, there could have been some type of situation where you guys were initially challenged, but I feel that 
there's been this bump in the road that you both have overcame. And this is going to draw you guys in closer. This is going to build a stronger, solid, more solid foundation. I do see you uh, having the opportunity to uh, take this relationship, um, take it to a deeper level. I feel like there's going to be the possibilities of stabilizing uh, or even committing to this relationship. And I feel like if you've been dealing with someone that's been hot and cold, or it just seems like they, they're not looking for commitment, that's quickly going to be changing in the month of March for you guys. I see them changing their mind. It's almost like even if they were adamant about expressing that they weren't looking for something long-term, I feel like they're going to be putting more effort. They're going to be more romantic towards you. They're going to be doing more gestures that lets you know exactly where they're at and exactly where what, what it is that they want moving forward. I do see open communication here. And again, a major transformation in regards to the partner or the person of your interest. Um, I feel like there were one foot in, one foot out, um, but something recently happened um, or they recently went through some type of aha moment that made them realize, you know, it really comes down to the effort that I put. And at this point, I feel like we've both invested time and effort into it or into the connection. So they're definitely going to be able to uh, let you know exactly what it is that they feel for you. And I feel like for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with a situation where you didn't really know exactly what your person of interest feels towards you. I feel like they're going to be opening up and expressing that uh, in a verbal way. So beautiful energy, cancer. All right, let's go to Leo. Leo, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Let's see. Spirit guides, ancestors, give us guidance for Leo, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What does their person of interest feel towards them? And where's this connection going? If it's going anywhere at all, give us clarity, give us insight. Leo, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Leo, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. You have the eight of wands, the eight of cups, the page of cups, the four of swords, the high priestess, and the queen of swords. Someone was definitely in their head about this connection, Leo. Um, I feel like this could have been you walking away from a connection or someone from the past that uh, perhaps you felt that you were still emotionally invested in. Um, but I, I, I see you choosing you and moving towards a deeper or more spiritual connection. I feel like at this point, a lot of you Leos may be experiencing the desire, or the want of a deeper type of connection. And for a lot of you guys, this could, you know, especially those of you guys that have been in a long-term relationship and there was some type of ending or some type of temporary separation, I feel that this was needed. Why? Because they're saying that there was a need for you to choose or pick yourself. Um, so if you're being mistreated or if you weren't being appreciated, um, it was necessary to walk away and to choose yourself and choose your peace of mind. Within that, it's going to trigger, it has triggered the person that you were dealing with to realize that, hey, Leo's not going to be sitting here waiting for you to make up your mind. So it's them waking up to their higher calling of this connection. For some of you guys, you may even get a text or some type of communication where they're telling you, I feel like you're my soulmate. I feel like you're the one that's meant for me. Um, and it's going to come almost as a surprise, especially, like I said, if there's been distancing or some type of separation. Now, for others of you, it could have been that you walked away from a connection, choosing yourself, and in choosing yourself, here comes new love, new love that is more nourishing or that is going to be more emotionally fulfilling for you. And I do see that there was a need or a time for self-love, to give to yourself, to choose you, to put yourself, to stop allowing or to stop putting partners before your happiness or stop sacrificing your happiness to accommodate your partner. Um, so that there is a grander, uh, higher calling of understanding that things happen the way they were supposed to happen because there was some type of awakening. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, it could be the person you were dealing with that needed the shakeup. 
All right, my lovelies. So we are going now to Virgo. Let's see Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirit guides, give us guidance. Allow us to see clearly and concisely where this connection is going. What is it that Virgo's person of interest feels towards them? Where's this connection going if it's going anywhere at all? Oh, we got cards flying out, you guys. All right, we got the Eight of Pentacles, putting effort and energy, focus, determined. Okay, I like Queen of Pentacles. This is your energy, Virgo. You're very empowered. Nine of Cups, wish fulfillment, you guys. Justice. Wow. Okay, so for a lot of you, Virgos, I feel that from now all the way to August 2022, there could be proposals, there could be engagements, there could be a higher elevation of connection or relationship. For those of you guys that have been dealing with someone that has been on and off, um, not really anything serious uh, in regards to what they were wanting. At this point, they're seeing your value. At this point, they're seeing that they're not going to find someone better than Virgo. And they're realizing that they're waking up to that. And they're willing to commit where at one point they were extremely closed off or adamant about not committing. So there is definitely some type of energy that is shifting majorly for you guys. For those of you guys that are single, I am putting it out there from now all the way to August. You're going to be meeting your match. There's a person that's coming in that is ready. They've been searching. They've been asking. They've been praying for you, Virgo. So you're finally being able to uh, not only get your wish fulfillment, but to genuinely feel a very deep spiritual connection. Uh, this is very healing type of energy. And what I'm hearing is for those of you Virgos out there that have been in a long-term committed relationship, but it just hasn't panned out, meaning taking it to the next level, you feel like you're at a stump or a slump, you feel like it's just not progressing the way you want it, do not worry about it no longer, let go and release yourself of that fear, because there is definitely commitment coming through. And they're also telling me that for those of you guys that recently received red roses, or that you will be receiving roses uh, from your partner, just know that when that happens, they're getting to the point of uh, either getting to the point of realization or getting to the point of assertiveness that they want to commit to you, Virgo. Beautiful energy here, you guys. Beautiful energy, Virgo. All right, now let's go with Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirit guides give us clarity for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for them? What is it that their partner or person of interest feels towards them? Where is this connection going? If it's going anywhere at all, give us insight. Give us understanding, please. Allow us to see clearly and concisely. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. We have the Four of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, the Knight of Cups, Six of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, and the Two of Pentacles. So they're telling me that in this connection, someone's been putting too much effort. Someone's been sacrificing to make the other happy. Uh, this could even feel like almost walking on eggshells or walking uh, on eggshells, not being able to fully express yourself because you're not trying to um, wake the beast, so to speak, or you're not trying to create any type of animosity. Now, this could be vice versa. It is a general reading, but what they're telling me here is, Libra, if they're not giving you the effort, if they're not putting energy towards you, if they are texting you like three hours after you text the, texted them, if they're not calling you and you're not the one, like if they don't call you because you're checking up on them, then it's time to pull your energy back, Libra. I feel like you've been going on this ongoing circle of never ending circle, I should say, where things keep repeating and the things or the situations or even relationships, it's almost like they keep mirroring uh, the partners that you keep dealing with. There is a need for you to snap out of it, Libra, and to realize that you need to be much more choosy when it comes to your partners. And I don't mean it in the sense of, oh, Jessica, but I am, I am picky about my partners. I'm picky, like, oh my God, they have to be this. I don't know why I'm talking that way. It's just coming through that way. 
it's not about the superficial or the physical. If you have a tendency of going for that, then that's your problem. And that's what you need to realize that you need to find a partner that has the same commonalities, the same interests as you so that it can deepen the connection. If it's just on uh, pure physical connection or physical beauty, it will only allow you to go so far with someone until you get to the point of realizing like you guys are completely off because you guys are polar opposites and not in a positive way. So I feel like there is always a constant sacrificing, whether it's you or whether it's the tendency of looking for partners that don't have a backbone and that are not assertive. And I feel like by them being more passive, it just frustrates you because you yourself could be very relaxed or chill. So again, there is something that's been ongoing for you guys where you have to come to terms understand why you're attracting that type of partner or understanding why you are physically attracted to those type of people and understanding that uh, there is a reason behind it. There, there's almost like a, a falling deeply madly in love for someone that you know is emotionally unavailable. Where is that stemming from? You have to realize that in order to change the outcome because if you don't and you continue on this path, or you continue on dealing with this person where you're giving your heart out and they keep stomping on it, th there's going to be no, no progress, no changes. The only change that's happening or that continuously keeps happening is your disappointment and disillusion getting to the point of being cynical when it comes to love and romance. So again, think about that for a bit, Libra. All right, now we're going to Scorpio. All right, you guys. If you guys do like these readings, like I said, comment below, let me know, like, share, uh, and don't forget to subscribe. Let me know you guys like these videos and I'll continuously keep giving you these videos. I'm not the type of person or the type of reader that will upload like an hour type of read. I'm to the point, um, if you want a one hour reading or something like that, then you can purchase our personal readings. Um, but I just like to be to the point. Um, I feel like time is of the essence, right? <laughs> At least for me, it is. All right, let's see. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Spirits, please give us guidance, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. What does the partner or person of interest of Scorpio, what do they feel about them? Where's this connection going? If it's going anywhere at all, give us insight, give us clarity. All right, so we're starting off here with the Two of Swords. Oh, my bad. Seven of Pentacles, Two of Swords, Four of Swords. Okay. I think I pulled one too many cards. All right. So we have the seven of pentacles, two of swords, six of swords, queen of swords, a lot of swords energy here. Scorpio, you may be dealing with air energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. I do see Aquarius here with the star card as well. Five of pentacles. Um, I see the past coming back around. You may be dealing with someone from the past, Scorpio. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you've moved on. You could currently be in a relationship or in a connection. Um, but I feel like for some of you guys, you know, your heart is just set on someone from the past that perhaps walked away from the connection or didn't put as much effort and energy as you did at some point. They're telling you it's time to move on, Scorpio. Um, time to move on, especially, like I said, if you've been holding out for someone to make up their mind about you or to realize uh, your worth. What they're saying here is they should have known by now and they do know. Trust me when I say they do know. They just feel like you're going to be, like you're going to stick around. Like you're going to wait it out. Like you're going to pretty much put up with their nonsense. And I know a lot of Scorpios and I love you guys. <laughs> I know you guys are not the type to sit there and be like, okay, I'm going to wait for this person. Um, but I also do know that Scorpios are extremely loyal to a fault when you are you know, when your heart is committed to something. Um, but what they're telling you here is if you continuously keep holding on or waiting for this person to change, the only one that's going to change in the process is yourself um, and not for the better. I feel like you're already changing or there are certain things about you that you've been progressively changing to kind of mold yourself or become what you think 
your partner or person of interest needs or wants, and you're kind of losing yourself in this connection. So what they're telling you is choose yourself, Scorpio, walk away from something that is, um, that is not giving you anything in return. Um, I know that relationships could be difficult. And I know that sometimes overcoming obstacles is a necessity to strengthen the relationship to uh, create more endurance in the relationship. But if what you're constantly doing is fighting for the relationship, then there's a problem. And what they're telling you here is the moment you're able to detach yourself and completely let go of the past, uh, you're definitely going to be guided towards a much more spiritual, much more nourishing, much more committed type of relationship. Um, Five of Pentacles here often feeling like uh, you're usually left uh, feeling empty handed, like you're the one that always, you know, puts more effort. You're the one that, you know, pretty much carries the relationship. And what they're telling you here is uh, it's time to see things clearly and concisely. If it's not working out for you at this point, it's time to walk away um, before you completely lose yourself and completely change. Um, and not for the positive change in the aspect of even forgetting to have fun and, you know, being so consumed with this connection or with this relationship, it's draining the shit out of you. And again, always choose your inner peace. If they're not providing any type of stability and they're messing with your peace, there is no point in holding on to this Scorpio. Now, I feel like for some of you guys, this message is for, um, you may not actually be dealing with the person, um, but I feel like you're still holding out or hoping uh, that they come back around. And I'm going to be honest with you. I do see them reaching out, but I feel like they only reach out um, just to see if you're willing to accept them or take them back. I don't see it like them genuinely wanting to pursue the connection. I feel like it's just ego-based trying to prove to themselves that they can get you back, Scorpio. So my advice is if you're still holding on to someone from the past um, to see where it goes. It's time to move on. It's time to let go completely of expectations from people from the past. And it's time to find your happiness, Scorpio. All right, my lovelies. Okay, so now we're going with Sagittarius. Let's see. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Spirit guides, give us guidance. Give us insight for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Allow us to see clearly and concisely. What does their person, what does their person feel towards Sagittarius? Where's this connection going? If it's going anywhere at all, give us insight. Give us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Please reveal. Here we go. Sagittarius. We have the Ace of Swords. Page of Pentacles, Tower card here, wow. Queen of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, Three of Wands. There is, for those of you guys that have been at a distance or haven't really heard much about your partner or person of interest, they're not really communicating. I feel like communication is coming in and it's coming in rather quick. For some of you guys, this could be communication that is unexpected. I feel like they are, they're coming out of like the darkness. I don't know how long you haven't really heard from them or if there's been any communication or contact whatsoever, but I feel that they're coming in. Um, and this communication is definitely whatever message or whatever it is that they reach out to you about, it's definitely going to shake you. I feel like it has more to do with news and movements uh, or hearing about movements that they've been doing um, the while they've been away from you or separated. Um, I don't necessarily see it as something negative. What I'm sensing here more has a lot to do with like big moves that they're doing. So if you feel like there's been no communication, but you guys are, you know, um, at a distance, if you're dealing with someone from a distance, I feel that they're, you're going to be getting some type of news or some type of information that you were definitely not expecting. I don't want to rush into saying it's not negative. I don't feel it. Honestly, I don't feel like it's negative. I feel like it has more to do with you weren't expecting it. Um, it could be that they are uh, 
really focus their putting effort and energy towards their career, towards their finances. For some, it could be that they recently got a car. For others, it could be that they're in the process of getting some type of real estate, uh, like purchasing a home or something like that, where you thought of them at a certain, a certain way. For some of you guys, even like you kind of seen certain traits about them as immature. And then all of a sudden you realize that they're like making big moves. I feel your perspective towards them is going to be changing um, for the better. Now, for others of you, this could be communication that comes in, especially those of you guys that uh, there was some type of uh, pulling away or some type of breakup or separation. I feel that they're coming back around and they will be contacting you. They will be reaching out, wanting to uh, see where this connection can possibly go. But I don't feel like it's going to be very quick in the ask. Yes, it's going to be quick, the communication, but it's not going to be quick as in regards to progressively how quick it moves, I feel like they're taking their time. So I'm not sure exactly where you're at in this connection um, or what happened in the past, but I feel like they're being very methodical in regards to taking it slow. So if you're trying to, if you hear from your ex or you hear from your person and you haven't really heard from them and you're expecting to like, as soon as they reach out, you're expecting them to like rush and, and jump into the relationship again or rush into wanting to get back together. Um, don't be surprised if they are like slowly, progressively taking their time. I feel like right now they're making big moves. And with these big moves, just know that if they're coming back around and they're contacting you, it's because they are thinking of you for the future, but don't try to push them or don't try to pressure them into, you know, getting back together. Or if you haven't been official, don't try to push them into wanting a relationship because that's going to scare them off. Um, be open and ready to be patient. Now, if this is you, the one that's been patient and they haven't really committed to you, do not be surprised if an earth sign shows up out of the blue in the month of March and they sweep you off your feet. Uh, earth energy would be a Taurus, Capricorn, or Gemini. Um, I feel like there is some type of momentum or shift that's happening uh, for those of you guys that have been waiting for someone to get their shit together, because what I'm hearing is here they are, the person you've been hoping and wanting it, or I should say the person you've been wanting, um, but didn't know you needed. Um, so it could indicate that there's a shift in energy. Someone's coming in. Uh, someone's coming in that is not the person your heart has been set on however they will be sweeping you off your feet Sagittarius all right that was a pretty long reading <laughs> all right here we go who's next Capricorn Capricorn Sun Moon Rising Venus let's see what's going on with Capricorns spirit guides please reveal to us to us Capricorn Sun Moon Rising Venus what does their person feel towards them where's this connection going if it's going anywhere at all gives insight gives understanding gives clarity Capricorn Sun Moon Rising Venus Capricorn here we go all right we're starting off with the High Priestess Nine of Cups the Moon card holy moly guacamole <laughs> Powerful cards, Capricorn. We have the High Priestess, the Nine of Cups, the Moon card, the Wheel of the Year, the Ten of Swords, and the Death card. You guys, wow, that is all I can say. Um, I feel astrologically right now, you guys are definitely giving or getting that push towards your wish fulfillments, towards your manifestations, towards the type of relationship you've been hoping or wanting. The High Priestess indicates uh, the the deepening of the connection or the desire to find a connection that is deepening uh, that meets your desires in every single level, not just physical, but intellectual, emotional. Um, High Priestess is an indication to me that there is, especially reflecting the Nine of Cups, there is a wish fulfillment that's coming through for you, Capricorns. I feel that your person um, may come to the realization that you are it or that it doesn't get any better than you. The moon card reflecting the energies that we're currently experiencing right now. Uh, this could also indicate a cancer coming back around in your life, Capricorn. 
and it could, you know, catch you completely off guard because you thought that at some point um, there was like a complete ending or culmination. And I feel like there is an ending for you guys, but it's the ending of inconsistency or instability when we're talking about relationships. There's like this revamp energy that is happening for you guys where it's almost like everything's going to start to fall into place for you Capricorns. Now, I do want to let you guys know, for those of you guys that are single or recently became single or have been single for a very long time, do not be surprised if you meet someone while you're out um, in a gathering, some type of social outing at night. They're showing me, you know, the nighttime um, where you're ready to move on or you're ready to take the next step or you're ready to step out into the dating pool and then boom, you're drawn to someone that's coming into your life and this is predestined. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with water energy, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer. For others of you, you may be dealing with earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, like uh, Capricorn, like yourself or Virgo. I see fire energy here as well. Leo, Sagittarius and Aries type of energy. To be honest, I see all the signs here with the wheel of the year. However, what they're telling me here is that the shift is changing drastically for you guys. Now, this is not to say, Capricorn, if you've been dealing with inconsistency with the person that you've been with for longer or over a year, and things have just not stabilized whatsoever, there is an ending that's coming. Do not resist this ending. This is a separation. This is a breakup. This is a complete done finito. It's a wrap up. Um, the positive in that is that the moment that you stop resisting the ending or you stop resisting the realizing that you've outgrown that connection or that that connection no longer vibrates to your frequency, the moment you realize that and close the chapter on that and decide to move on, you meet the person you're going to have a very deep connection with for the next coming years. Um, for others of you, this could be Jupiter's return. Um, for some of you guys, this could be the alignment of either Jupiter or Venus in your chart, um, because there is definitely a conclusion of anything that hasn't been working out in regards to love and romance. But at the same time, right at the cusp of that is when the right person shows up. So uh, major powerful energy here, Capricorn. All right. I think Capricorn's got uh, Jupiter return last year. <clears throat> So this could be your person coming in. All right. All right, Spirit Guides, Ancestors, give us clarity in regards to Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What does their person feel towards them? Where's this connection going? If it's going anywhere at all, give us clarity, give us insight, allow us to understand Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. Aquarius, we're starting off with the Karma card, Six of Wands. The Hanged Man, the Ace of Wands, the Chariot, boom, the Justice card, my lovelies. You definitely have or have been dealing with a karmic type of connection. Um, this could be a person that uh, you may have children from. For others of you, this could be a situation where you've been dealing with this person for quite a while um, and things haven't really progressed the way you would hope or want that's quickly going to be changing. The hanged man indicates someone's changing their mind in regards to not wanting commitment. The ace of wands is the regeneration of some type of passion being reignited. The chariot coming in quick, making a decision, being assertive, being concise. The justice card definitely indicating some type of higher commitment. This is marriage. This is engagement. For some of you guys, this could indicate you know, if you've been dealing with a baby mama or baby daddy for a while, and you guys are kind of iffy about giving each other a chance, in March, I definitely see someone making up their mind, and they're definitely going for it. They're definitely shooting their shot. If this is a person that you recently started dealing with, and you're unsure if they're interested, they're going to make that very clear for you in the month of March, because they're coming in strong. It's like they made up their mind, or something that they were holding on to in the past, didn't pan out or they came to the realization that they were kind of um kind of having them in this pedestal 
And they've realized something about the character that they just it made them sick. They're over it. Um, so it's like them completely detaching themselves from the past and being assertive and concise towards where they're wanting to head or towards what they want this relationship to become. So if you were dealing with someone that was in, you know, inconsistent or dealing with someone that you kind of didn't know exactly where you stood with them, um, I feel that the reason was because they had reservations about the connection and it could have been because of someone from the past. But I feel like they are basically cleaning, cleaning that slate completely clean and they're ready to start something new with you and they're excited about it as well. So I definitely do see a deepening of a connection here for you Aquarians out there. All right, and finally, we're coming to Pisces. Last, but just that special. <laughs> Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, it's very good. It's giving us clarity insight. What does the person of Pisces feel towards them? Where's this connection going? If it's going anywhere at all, please give us clarity, give us insight, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Allow us to see clearly and concisely Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. I love my Pisces, you guys. Honestly, my mother is a Pisces and my sister is a Pisces. And they drive me freaking insane. All that emotion, all that, oh, heavy energy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I love my sister. It's a... Uh, it's funny. She cannot go a day without calling me or blowing up my phone. It's like, it's, it's, we have a very deep connection. But sometimes y'all are a handful, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, spread guides, give us clarity, give us insight. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. There we go. All right. We have the Knight of Pentacles, the Three of Wands, the Temperance card here, Hermit. Four of Cups and the Strength card. All right, Pisces. This connection has been slow in the making. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with distancing. This could be a long-term, sorry, not long-term, long-distance relationship. For others of you, it's just very fucking inconsistent. Um, and the reason for it, you're dealing with a childlike type of energy. You're dealing with someone that is immature. You're dealing with someone that one day wakes up feeling a certain way and then the next day they change their mind. There's a lot of inconsistency here and I feel like they highly rely on you for the connection. So this could be you, the one that's constantly reaching out or communicating um, or a feeling of like they're not putting effort. Um, and the reason for it is, again, this is a person that is very immature. Uh, there's a lot of distractions. I see a lot of figures in these cards and it's indicating to me like, they are on overdrive in regards to like, maybe they're extremely social. Maybe they keep their options open. I'm going to be honest. I feel like they're not wholeheartedly committed to the connection. And I feel like you shouldn't either Pisces. I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's almost like, like putting effort because you're trying to prove something, but you don't need to prove shit. This person knows you're amazing. This person knows you're beautiful. Um, they're just immature. And no matter how hard you go above and beyond to show them or prove to them, it's not gonna, like they're not going to realize it on a deeper level because it's kind of like talking major knowledge or dropping major knowledge to someone that's ignorant or to someone that is blissfully ignorant. It's going to go in through one ear and out the other. So I feel like at this point, you need to learn to choose yourself, Pisces. You need to trust yourself. Know the amazing person you are. Know that you deserve to be treated, but nothing like a queen or king. And do not settle. Major, major message here for you, Pisces. Do not settle. If they're not treating you right, walk away from that. If they're not putting effort and energy, walk away from that. If they are not treating you the way you should be treated or the way you treat them, then it's time to start creating distance here. Because I feel like the more you try, the less interested they are in the connection. And it's only because you're consistent or they know that they can manipulate you into feeling bad for them and forgiving them. So again, if they're being inconsistent, walk away from this. Uh, you know, don't overextend yourself, Pisces. Don't over-sacrifice yourself. 
to accommodate someone else. And I feel like the, the accommodating comes through as in like trying to prove to yourself that, that you're worthy, but that worthiness shouldn't come from someone else. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you need to accept you deserve better. You need to accept that you are worthy of and anyone that doesn't treat you as such or in that type of alignment, close the door on it because I feel like you're wasting time and they're just stringing you along. All right, my lovelies. All right, sweethearts. I hope that you guys enjoyed these readings. I know not all of them were great news, but we keep it 100 here. Hope you guys like these readings. If you do, comment below, let me know. I wish you guys the very best and we'll see each other soon. Till then, bye.